Chapter 81 by Chen's words you are listening at novelfull.audio. That's fine by me. How could Bai Chen not be fine when Long Su In was buying? How could he possibly say no? Thank you, Long Su In thanked him. In fact, she was quite nervous about this since Bai Chen was not an ordinary person. She was afraid he would refuse to dine with Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin, whom she had brought along. There's no need to thank me. Bai Chen did now know why Long Su In had to thank him, but he answered in an even tone of voice. Meanwhile, he was looking for a way to use the vaccine on Tang Yin to cure her disease, in order to successfully complete his mission. Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin looked at each other, puzzled. They did not expect a woman like Long Su In, who had never cared about any man, to speak to Bai Chen that way. As a matter of fact, they were already secretly surprised to learn that the friend she had come with was a man. But, seeing the way she behaved with and spoke to Bai Chen surprised them even more. Uncle Tang, Auntie Tang, shall we order? Long Su and did not seem to notice the look of surprise on the Tang couple's faces. She only saw them looking at each other. Yes. Let's order. Tang Yin nodded. Her expression returned to normal. Tang Ziqing did the same, before calling for a waiter to take their orders. After the waiter had taken their order, Tang Ziqing and Tang Yin were speechless. This was because Long Su In had ordered food for Bai Chen without him even touching the menu. In the couple's eyes, Long Su In was no different from a girlfriend who did everything to please her boyfriend. Honey, do you think they're a couple? Tang Yin could not help whispering this question to her husband. Tang Ziqing furrowed his brows a little. It seems that way, but it also seems not to be. Tang Yin nodded as if she understood. She had the same thoughts. What a pity. He has all the qualities to become my son.in. Law. I did not think he would be this close with Su In. It was clear that what he had said five days ago was because he saw that Bai Chen had the potential to become his son. In. Law. The reason he had disguised himself as a beggar was to find a kind. Hearted and generous person. This was all because of his daughter's unique situation, he wanted her to be with a kind and generous man, not some insincere guy like the ones who had approached his daughter in the past, or like the ones he had encountered. It was unfortunate that he had not yet had the chance to observe Bai Chen more. He had turned out to already be in some unusual relationship with Long Su In. Tang Zicheng sighed and put Bai Chen out of his mind. This method should work. Bai Chen had already thought of a way to complete his mission even before the food was served. It was fortune dot telling, just like he had used with Long Su In. If he told Tang Yin that she had a horrible disease, she would be shocked and wondered how he knew. Then, he would pretend to tell her fortune and give her the vaccine bottle from the magic medicine set. Once she had used it, his mission would be complete. After he had figured out his method, Bai Chen did not hesitate. He looked at Tang Yin before speaking up. Auntie Tang, your face is very pale. You must have some kind of incurable disease, correct? Hearing his words, Tang Yin was a little surprised. She had not expected him to say that. It was true that her face had become thin and her skin rather pale. But when others saw her, they would only think she was sick, not that she had a horrible disease like Bai Chen had said. Thus, she could not help but feel surprised. Long Su In was a good example of this. When they had run into each other before, Long Su In had only asked what kind of sickness she had, not knowing about the disease. It was not only Tang Yin who was surprised by Bai Chen's words. Tang Zicheng was, too. His expression changed and his eyes narrowed to the point where they almost made a straight line. He looked at Bai Chen for a while before turning to look at his wife who was sitting next to him. How did he know my wife has an incurable disease? After looking at Tang Yin for a moment, Tang Zicheng could not help wondering. Because in his eyes, Tang Yin only seemed to have a normal sickness, even though she actually had an incurable disease. Long Su In, who was sitting next to Bai Chen, was no less surprised than the Tang couple. 
she actually stood up and looked intensely at Tang Yin. Auntie Yin, is it true that you have an incurable disease? It was clear that Bai Chen's words had affected her greatly. This was evidently because of the time when he had told her that she would become blind and told her fortune. Thus, she believed wholeheartedly that what he had just told Tang Yin was true. She could not help but stand up. Because Tang Yin having an incurable disease was a big deal to her. Tang Yin was an aunt that she respected. Moreover, she was a close friend of Long Su In's mother. Tang Yin calmed herself down. She did not know what to do or say. Enve she took a long look at Long Su In without a word slipping past her lips. Clearly, she did not know whether to tell Long Su In about her incurable disease or not. End of chapter 81 Chapter 82 blurted out you are listening at novel full audio. How could your auntie Yin have an incurable disease? Don't worry, Su In. Your auntie Yin is just sick with an illness that makes her lose her appetite. That's all. While Tang Yin was reluctant to speak, Tang Ziqing intervened. He talked fluently, without any irregularities. His face was extremely calm. It was as if what he said was the absolute truth. Your name's Bai Chen, right? You shouldn't be spewing nonsense. After talking to Long Su In, Tang Ziqing turned to speak with Bai Chen. His tone was critical. Long Su In did not believe what Tang Ziqing said. She turned to look at him and asked, Is that true, Uncle Ziqing? Of course. Why would I lie to you? My dear Ian, please tell her. Tang Ziqing nodded and turned to look at his wife. Hearing her husband's words, Tang Yin nodded. It's just as your uncle said. I don't have a fatal disease. As I've told you before, I just have a common cold, which is why I have somewhat lost my appetite. It was apparent from Tang Ziqing and Tang Yin's words that they did not want to make Long Su in worried, which was why they chose to lie. Long Su in went quiet before slowly sinking down into the chair. She turned to look at Bai Chen. Bai Chen, is what you said true? Bai Chen, who had remained quiet all throughout, nodded lightly. He did not care about Tang Zi Cheng's scolding words at all. Because if he did, how could he complete the mission? He would definitely fail. Of course, it's true. If we let this matter slide, Anti Tang will only have a few months left to live. What? Long Su In's face went pale. Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin had shocked expressions on their faces, showing disbelief. What Bai Chen said was absolutely true. There were no words that he had said that were untrue. So, how could this not shock the married couple then? Apart from the two of them, there was only the doctor responsible for Tang Yin's case that knew about this. They had not told anyone yet. The reason for this was, of course, not wanting other people to be worried. Their situation was not very different from Long Su In's when she had decided not to tell anyone that she was going blind. Don't be Riddick. After taking a deep, shocked breath, Tang Zicheng's face turned solemn. He shouted loudly. But he could not finish with what he was shouting. Long Su In stopped him with her loudly yelled, Uncle Tang. Tang Zicheng's bellowing and Long Su In's shout made the restaurant customers eating nearby turn to look. My dear, Su In, please calm down. Tang Yin thought it was not good to argue in a restaurant like this. Tang Zicheng looked over at Long Su In. He did not understand why this young girl would interrupt him with her shouting like this. But a realization dawned on him a few seconds later. He understood it in an instant. His eyes shifted to look at Bai Chen. If he had to guess, Bai Chen must be the reason for Long Su In's aggression. It was because he had been scolding Bai Chen previously. This guy is important enough to make Su In protect him. Tang Zicheng could not help but wonder about this in his mind. It seems like their relationship is not just being friends. Is there a cure? Long Su In did not care about the eyes of the people around. She did not even care about Tang Zicheng. 
Her eyes were fixed with anticipation on Bai Chen. From her point of view, there was no one in this world other than Bai Chen who could cure Tang Yin's incurable disease. Her reason for believing this was how he had cured her when she was about to go blind. Bai Chen had made her able to see again with the gold dot framed glasses that he had given her. As it was like this, how could she not expect something from him in this situation? Bai Chen did not reply right away. The corners of his mouth lifted into a smile before answering. Of course. What? Both Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin were dumbfounded at his words again. Long Su In's reaction was not like those of the Tang couple. She sighed with relief. If Bai Chen could cure Tang Yin's incurable disease, then there was nothing she had to worry about. Don't joke around. Do you know what condition my wife has? Tang Zicheng calmed himself down and spoke. His words were confirming that his wife really did have an incurable disease. My dear. Tang Yin anxiously said when she heard what her husband had said. Tang Zicheng realized that he just blurted something out. His face changed a little, but in the end, he let out a sigh. It's fine, my dear Ian. Seems like we cannot hide this from Su In anymore. Tang Yin sighed. She looked at Long Su In's face. Your uncle and I didn't want to hide anything from you, Su In. It was just that we did not want you to worry. I understand that very well, Auntie. Why would Long Su In not understand this? She had been in the same situation as well, only a few days ago. But don't worry, Auntie. Bai Chen said he has a cure for your incurable disease. About this, Tang Yin was speechless. She turned to look at Bai Chen. Her heart was filled with intense disbelief. It was common knowledge that the disease that she had could not be cured. It had taken so many lives, even though there were some cases where patients were successfully treated. But those were very rare, and the success of the treatment methods used was just a coincidence. There were no specific clinical methods to cure this disease. What she had was a new disease that had just appeared on earth not very long ago. The name of the disease was GT.2. It first appeared in 2016 in South Africa. It was said that the disease made the patient lose their appetite. Whatever they ate would be absolutely tasteless, and in the end, they would die from malnutrition. End of chapter 82 Chapter 83 The Cure You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Tang Zicheng looked at Long Su In's face, which was very serious as if she was not telling lies. He could not help but turn to look at Bai Chen with a solemn expression before asking hesitantly, Can you really cure my wife's illness? Having asked that, Tang Zicheng immediately wondered how Bai Chen knew his wife had fallen ill to an incurable disease, so he had to put forth another question. And how did you know my wife has a fatal incurable disease? It's not a difficult thing for him, Uncle Zicheng. Bai Chen's very good at fortune.telling. Long Su in replied in Bai Chen's stead. The boy, who was about to say something, had to close his mouth and give a dry smile. He thought she really knew the way of things. Long Su in answering the question for him was indeed quite good for him. Because that meant he would not have to lie about fortune dot telling again, now that she had spoken for him. You're saying that he knew because of fortune dot telling, Su In. Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin frowned at the same time. Long Su In nodded. Yes, uncle, auntie, Bai Chen's really good at it. The young woman was clearly not worried about the incurable disease that Tang Yin had anymore. Speaking of, auntie Yin, what disease do you have? she asked. Tang Yin had to shift her attention from Long Su In's words about Bai Chen's magnificent fortune. Telling skills. She took a deep breath and answered softly, I have GT.2. Long Su In's beautiful eyes widened as soon as she heard Tang Yin's words. She almost cried out. Luckily, she covered her mouth with her hands just in time. Over one minute later, Long Su and finally calmed down. She looked at Tang Yin with a serious expression. Her anxiety seemed to have returned. Why, 
You really have GT.2. Tang Yin nodded in reply. Tang Zicheng did not care about the conversation between Long Su In and Tang Yin at all. His eyes were fixed on Bai Chen. Do you still have a cure for my wife, knowing that she has GT.2? The fact that Tang Yin had GT.2 quietly shocked Bai Chen as well. He had some knowledge about how it was a fatal disease that had taken a great many lives. But his bewilderment did not last long when he thought of the vaccine in the magical medicine set and the fact that it could cure all the diseases in the world. He obviously had no doubts in regard to the magical medicine set, because it was something that he had gotten from the marvelous life-changing system. Of course, I do. He nodded with confidence. And what's your cure? Tang Zicheng asked in a stern voice. His face told it all. He did not believe in Bai Chen's words. Let's eat first, then we can find a quiet place to discuss this matter, Bai Chen said as he saw the staff approaching their table with a variety of dishes on a trolley. About one hour later, inside a hotel room near Xing Yuan department store, Bai Chen and Long Su In were seated side by side on two chairs. Opposite them were Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin. The two of them were sitting on a long sofa. There was a glass table between the two sides. On it was four glasses of cold water. This hotel room was quite spacious. It could definitely be called a premium suite. Dot other than the king dot size bed, as well as the glass table and long sofa, there were also some chairs, a television, and other facilities inside the room. Now tell me. What is your treatment method? Tang Zicheng looked at Bai Chen and said sternly, I hope you're not lying, Bai Chen. Don't worry, Uncle Zicheng. Please believe him, Long Su in replied for Bai Chen again. When he'd said he had a cure for GT.2, she had not felt worried anymore. Long Su in obviously believed in Bai Chen unconditionally. Don't worry. My method's really easy, said Bai Chen, before standing up from the chair. Please wait for a bit. He then walked towards the door and exited the room. Long Su In and the Tang couple were confused. They did not understand why Bai Chen had to leave the room. But they soon understood what was going on. He opened the door and came back in with a small medicine box in his hand. Sorry to keep you waiting. Bai Chen sat down on a chair. He said that while opening the medicine box and taking out one syringe along with a small vaccine bottle. He placed both things on the glass table and also put the medicine box there. This is. Tang Ziqing frowned, eyeing the syringe and the vaccine bottle. Tang Yin and Long Su In were doing the same thing. Their eyes were fixed on the syringe and the bottle as well. This is the cure for GT.2. This vaccine can cure the disease, explained Bai Chen. He had left the room previously to take out the magical medicine set from the dimension ring before coming back into the room again, after letting some time pass first. How can I believe you? Tang Zicheng did not know where he had gotten the medicine box from, but he chose not to ask. He only inquired about for the important issues. Tang Yin, who was sitting next to her husband, had a serious expression. She was listening closely because this matter was all about her. She did not believe that the vaccine Bai Chen had brought could cure the GT.2 disease that she had, though. Long Su In's eyes lit up when she looked at the box, the syringe, and the vaccine bottle. She thought these three things were definitely extraordinary. They must be just like the gold dot framed glasses that she was wearing right now. Long Su In believed that the medicine that Bai Chen had brought would surely be able to cure Auntie Yin's GT.2. End of Chapter 83 Chapter 84 Mission Failure You are listening at NovelFull.audio It's not a matter of you believing me or not. It's a matter of you letting your wife try this remedy or not, said Bai Chen. Bed Odem he was not a very persuasive speaker, so he could not change Tang Zicheng's mind with a convincing, eloquent speech. Thus, he could help to say what he had said, and every word he uttered was accurate. This matter was not a matter of faith, it was a matter of whether one wanted to try it or not. 
Tang Zicheng's face grew solemn. His stern gaze was locked on by Chen's face. Don't you joke around. Do you think I would let my wife inject a vaccine with who knows what in it into her body? Tang Yin said nothing on this matter. She just let her husband take care of it. But her silence clearly indicated that she certainly did not want to use by Chen's vaccine. How the situation unfolded was not surprising at all. As a matter of fact, anyone would have reacted the same way in this situation. Accepting a vaccine from someone they had just met today was not something that could happen that easily. Long Su In looked at Bai Chen. She was about to say something, but she could not say it as Bai Chen stopped her with his gaze. So, you choose not to try. After glancing at Long Su In, Bai Chen turned to the married couple. Tang Zicheng took a deep breath. He felt quite livid hearing what Bai Chen had said because he had declared in a serious manner before this that he would not allow his wife to try it. Tang Yin also felt mild anger. If Bai Chen had not come with Long Su In, she would not even pay any mind to him. No, I don't want to try it. It can't be helped then. Bai Chen put the syringe and the vaccine bottle back into the medicine box. If the other party did not cooperate, there was nothing he could do. He sighed internally at the situation. This would be the first time he had failed to complete a mission. Bai Chen had thought he would be successful using the same method he used to persuade Long Su In. It seemed he hadn't thought things through this time. After packing the medicine away, Bai Chen stood up from the chair and said to Long Su In. Su In, let's head off. But, Long Su In could not accept this. She very much wanted to tell her story to Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin. Her story might change their minds. She clearly did not want Tang Yin to die a few months after this. If you won't leave, then I'll have to excuse myself. Bai Chen did not want to waste even one second here. This was because Tang Zicheng was looking at him with a hostile gaze, which was very different from before. Long Su In thought for several seconds before making up her mind about something. Bai Chen, you head off first. Let me talk to them first. Can you also take the syringe and the medicine out of the box for me as well? Bai Chen shook his head almost immediately. It's not something I can give you. I'm helping them because of you. If they don't want to try, then that's the end of it. There's no second chance or future chances. Hearing this made Long Su and go silent. In the end, she let out a sigh and stood up from the chair. Uncle Zicheng, Antian, I'll have to excuse myself. Sorry for wasting your time. After that, she left the room with Bai Chen. Tang Zicheng seemed very irritated. Why would Su and have listened to that boy? He had clearly started to dislike Bai Chen for what he said previously. It's not a matter of you believing me or not. It's a matter of you letting your wife try this remedy or not. Never mind, dear, Tang Yin said and got out a mobile phone from a luxury brand. I'll give Su In's mother a call. I'll tell her to get Su In to stop associating with this boy, Bai Chen. Please do. That will be best for Su In. Tang Zicheng agreed with this idea and gave her a nod. Ding. Mission failed. Mission 15. Save a middle dot aged woman from a horrible disease. Failed, penalty for failure. The middle dot aged woman will die from the disease in a few months. After exiting the hotel with Long Su In, the mission dot failure window popped up. He could not help but sigh out loud. This was the first time he had failed to complete a mission. He did not feel too many emotions about it though. Because failing a mission did not have any effect on his score. It was just that Tang Yin would die a few months after this. Bai Chen could only think that this was her fate. He felt slightly sorry for her though. But would he help her again? Absolutely not. It was Tang Zicheng who had made him feel unwilling to help. Bai Chen. As they were walking together towards the hotel's parking lot where Long Su In's BMW was parked, Long Su In called out to him in a soft voice. 
Bai Chen could guess why she had called him. He shook his head. Don't say anything, Su In. I know what you're going to say. Long Su In immediately stopped short. In the end, she let out a very long sigh. She knew Bai Chen would never help to treat the GT.2 disease for Tang Yin again. Frankly speaking, she felt quite sad about this. But she did not know what to do. That vaccine. What kind of vaccine is it? Long Su In changed the topic abruptly. She chose not to care about Tang Yin's affairs anymore. A vaccine for all diseases, replied Bai Chen, before sending the medicine box into the dimension ring. This act made Long Su In's beautiful eyes widen, she was shaken to her core. She could barely believe her eyes when the medicine box in Bai Chen's hand suddenly vanished. This was even though she had seen him do this once before when he was at her house previously. End of chapter 84 Chapter 85 A Favor You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. You, unbelievable! Long Su In could not help but exclaim this aloud, though she knew Bai Chen had magical powers and had seen him pull this off once before. She was shocked, nevertheless. Long Su In took a deep breath and because she couldn't help herself, asked, What you just did, is it like the magic you showed me the other day? Yes. Bai Chen nodded. He had told her about his magic and showed it to her before, so he had nothing to hide. But, of course, what he had done was not any sort of magic. It was actually a magic ring. Bai Chen had only put the medicine box back into his ring. Long Su In could feel her heart pounding hard in her chest. She wanted to ask him to teach her how to cast this spell. However, after thinking this through, she did not dare to utter her request. In the end, Long Su In could only keep this matter in her heart. She thought about what he had said earlier, that the vaccine could cure all diseases. Her expression changed dramatically when she realized this. You, did you just say the vaccine you have could cure all diseases? She asked with a slightly shaky voice. Bai Chen nodded, not hiding anything. Yes, it's a vaccine for all diseases. Do you believe that? I believe you. Long Su In said without hesitation. She nodded vehemently. With the magic glasses that he had given her and the magic he had just performed, how could she not? Bai Chen was really surprised at her answer. If it had been someone else, they would have thought he had gone mad, because there was no such thing as a vaccine for all diseases in this world. You really believe it? I do. Long Su In reaffirmed her words. She stopped walking. Her expression was one of hesitation. Bai Chen saw her halt and could not help but to turn back to look at her. Is something the matter? I have a favor to ask. Though hesitant, Long Su In finally spoke her mind. A favor. Bai Chen frowned slightly. It's not asking me to give you the vaccine so that you can give it to your Auntie Tang, right? No, Long Su In shook her head almost instantly. She no longer had thoughts of helping Tang Yin in her mind. It was Tang Yin who had rejected Bai Chen's good intentions, and also hers. It's my grandpa. He's sick. His body's weak. Your grandpa's ill. Bai Chen felt skeptical. How coincidental could this be? He thought it was very possible that Long Su In was lying to him so that she could give Tang Yin the vaccine. You're not lying to me, right? I'm not lying. Long Su In replied quickly. She shook her head at the same time. I'm really not lying to you. If you don't believe me, I can take you to see my grandfather. I just want the vaccine. No, I'll buy it from you, no matter how much it costs. Bai Chen said nothing for quite a while. He lowered his head, busy with his own thoughts. He did not know if Long Su In was telling the truth or not. Now that she had said this much, he could not refuse to give it to her. Fine, I'll give you one bottle of the vaccine. Consider my debt to you paid, all right, said Bai Chen. He held out his hand, preparing to take out the medicine box. 
but before he could do that, Long Su In spoke up quickly. No, don't give it to me. To confirm that I'm being truthful, I'll take you with me to see my grandpa. Bai Chen had not expected Long Su In to say this. He lowered his hand, no longer taking out the medicine box from the dimension ring. So be it. By the way, where is your grandpa living? he asked. At Dong Hai Island, Long Su In replied. Dong Hai Island. Bai Chen revisited his memories a little. If he remembered correctly, this Dong Hai Island was in the south of China. It was an island in the middle of the Dong Hai Sea. Traveling there required either a ship or an airplane. Yes. Long Su In nodded. My grandfather is on that island. Do you want to come with me? Dot Bai Chen did not give his answer immediately. He stood there for a while, pondering, before eventually replying. Sure then. Thinking of it as me repaying my debt to you. Thank you, Long Su In thanked him and sighed with relief. Truthfully, she had thought he would say no. When are you going? Bai Chen asked. He had to make sure of this detail in order to plan ahead. Long Su In thought a little and gave her answer. As fast as I can. My grandpa's health is getting worse day by day. Tomorrow's okay then. Bai Chen said. For him, repaying his debt to Long Su In was considered a big issue. As for school, he had decided to take the entire week off. It seemed like there were many things he had to sort out, from Long Su In's issue to the White Tiger Gang's matters. Thank you so, so much, Bai Chen. I'll pick you up at the same place. Deal. Long Su In felt so elated that she wanted to rush in to hug Bai Chen. He waved his hand back and forth. It's me paying my debt to you like I said. Long Su In did not comment on this. For her, the fact that he said he was indebted to her, she had never considered him to be indebted to her. In Long Su In's mind, it was her who owed Bai Chen a lot, from the magic glasses he had given her and now this. Both issues were really huge to her, to the point that she felt she could never thank him enough. Of course, Bai Chen did not know what was going through Long Su In's mind. He turned around and kept walking as he spoke. Let's head back. Mm.hm Long Su In stopped pondering every matter she had been thinking of and sped after him. Their destination was, of course, the parking lot of this hotel, where the BMW was parked. And the reason for that was Bai Chen wanting Long Su In to drive him to the entrance of the Xing Sing Business District. End of Chapter 85 Chapter 86 Shock You are listening at NovelFull.audio After leaving the hotel, Tang Zicheng and Tang Yian traveled to a certain place by car. Their destination was the Xingzhou City Hospital, the biggest hospital in town. The reason for their visit was, of course, for a monthly check dot up for the GT.2 disease. The disease itself was incurable, but the symptoms could be delayed. China and other countries had developed an effective vaccine. Its result was quite extraordinary. This vaccine could delay the symptoms of GT.2 for as long as one year, from the first day the patient fell ill. But it was only a delay. After the one-year period was up, those who had the GT.2 disease would die nonetheless. Tang Zicheng and Tang Yian entered the hospital and arrived at the GT.2 department. This department was specifically for the GT.2 disease, and all the professionals were specialists. With everyone being specialists, this department had only a handful of staff. Uncle Zi Cheng and Antian, please take a seat. As they entered the room, a woman who was wearing a blue surgical mask and a surgical gown stood up from the chair. Her desk was right next to the wall. The room was filled with the scent of a variety of medicines. This woman had a flawless figure. Her beauty was beyond compare. Even hidden under the mask, her angelic face still shone through. Her black shiny hair extended to the middle of her back and was tied with a hair tie. She was wearing a white shirt and a long skirt under the surgical gown. If Bai Chen or Long Su In had been here, they would have immediately recognized who this woman was. 
she was none other than Su Xuanning. She was here and was clad in a surgical gown because she was a doctor who specialized in GT.2 disease. And even though she was a doctor of this hospital, she was a very special one. If Su Xuanning did not want to come, no one in the hospital could force her to. The reason that she had shown up here today was that Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin had asked for her to come. Su Xuanning's parents, like Long Su In's, were also friends with Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin. Since they had made a request, it was difficult for Su Xuanning to say no. In the end, she had to show up. If it was not for Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin's request, how could a person who disliked appearing in a public place show up? Hello, Xuanning, thanks for coming. Tang Zicheng thanked her immediately. He helped Tang Yin to two chairs near Su Xuanning's desk. Both of them sat down. It is no problem, Su Xuanning said. She looked at Tang Yin and sighed a little. She knew that Tang Yin would inevitably die in a few months. There was no cure for GT.2. The chance of her being successfully cured was near zero. Auntie, do you want to start the examination now? Su Xuanning asked. She did not want to waste much time here. She wanted to head out to train so that she could reach the sky soaring realm and become a strong cultivator as soon as possible. Yes, please do. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Tang Yin agreed to the check dot up right away. In truth, felt like she was troubling Su Xuanning considerably as well. Tang Zicheng let out a sigh. He looked at Su Xuanning. Her beauty greatly affected him, but only in the form of admiration. He harbored no ill intentions towards her. The reason that he sighed was that his wife's disease was incurable. He knew very well that she was going to pass away in a few months. Xuanning, I'm going to ask you frankly. Is there really no cure for this? Tang Zicheng could not help but ask. He asked because he wished there was a way to cure this disease, though he knew full well the answer to this question. Though he did not believe in that, Tang Zicheng could not help but ask. Su Xuanning shook her head and sighed. There's no cure for this disease. Sigh, it looks like I made the right call to not fall for what Long Su In's friend said. He really did lie, saying that that vaccine could cure GT.2, Tang Zicheng sighed and said with a hard tone. He thought he had made the right decision not believing Bai Chen and not letting his wife use the vaccine that Bai Chen had brought them. Hearing what Tang Zicheng said, Su Xuanning frowned a little. Su In's friend said there's a vaccine for GT.2. Tang Zicheng nodded and said in a slightly cross tone, yes. I couldn't believe that Su In would befriend such a man. And it seems like their relationship is not quite normal either. Su In seems to respect him a lot and believe his words, too. Su Xuanning's eyes darted back and forth. An image of a man appeared in her mind. That man was Bai Chen. Other than Bai Chen, there was no one else she could think of that Long Su In would respect and believe. She went quiet for a while before looking at Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin with serious expressions. Is that man's name Bai Chen? Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin were surprised. They had not thought that Su Xuanning would know Bai Chen too. That's right. They nodded in unison. If he said he has a vaccine for GT.2, then he really has a vaccine for GT.2, said Su Xuanning. What? Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin instantly got up from their chairs in shock. End of chapter 86 Chapter 87 Cutting Ties You are listening at NovelFull.audio As I just said, if he said he has a vaccine for GT.2, then he really has a vaccine for GT.2, Su Xuanning said with a calm voice. She really believed that Bai Chen had a vaccine for GT.2. She had heard that sky-soaring realm cultivators could easily get rid of diseases for other people using their strong qi. Maybe he invented the vaccine, she thought. Su Xuanning clearly thought that Bai Chen had invented the GT.2 vaccine. She had no doubts regarding his ability. 
This was because, in her eyes, he was one of the few sky-soaring realm cultivators in China. Su. Xue Ning, you're not kidding us, right? Tang Ziqing calmed down and said with a shaky voice. Su Xue Ning shook her head a little. If it was someone else, I would not believe it. But it's Bai Chen, I think you two should go see him. It's the only cure for GT.2. What is this? Tang Ziqing had an empty expression on his face. Tang Yin was not much different. Though they were glad to hear from Su Xue Ning that GT.2 could be cured, they did not act joyful or show their happiness. Instead, the husband and wife expressed shock and regret. Now, they felt very sorry. Not only had they rejected the vaccine from Bai Chen, but they had also been rather rude to him, especially Tang Zicheng, who had been particularly disdainful. Binov Kong the two of them did not doubt Su Xue Ning's words, because she was someone who would never tell lies or say nonsensical things. This was common knowledge among the five biggest families of Beijing. The Tang family was also one of the five biggest families, like the Su, the Long, the Wang, and the Xi families. It was not strange then, that the couple would know about Su Xue Ning's character. After a while, Tang Zicheng took a deep breath. He looked at Su Xue Ning's face solemnly. Can you tell me who he is? A normal person certainly could not know how to produce a GT. 2 Vaccine Tang Yin also wanted to know this. She calmed herself down and listened attentively. Su Xue Ning shook her head. I can't tell you. But what I do know is that he's not an ordinary person. So, I can send people to take the vaccine from him by force, right? Tang Zicheng did not care how extraordinary Bai Chen was. He only cared about the vaccine he had. His thought right now was to get the vaccine to cure his wife's GT.2 disease. No matter what method needed to be used. Of course, apologizing to Bai Chen was out of the question for him, too. Though he was not the leader of the Tang family, his rank was quite high. Apologizing to a young man would mean a great loss of dignity, though he had been the one who had acted impertinently. Su Xue Ning went quiet before staring at Tang Ziqing coldly. In the instant when she spoke, her voice was just as cold as her gaze. Tang Zicheng, if you want to destroy the Tang family, then be my guest. From this day onward, I won't consider you my uncle anymore. My parents will also cut ties with you as well from today. Remember. Don't drag us into this mess with you. After she was done, Su Xue Ning turned around and left the room without looking back at Tang Zicheng and Tang Yin again. Tang Zicheng's words had angered her greatly. What he had said was the thing she hated the most. Moreover, he dared to send men to take care of a sky-soaring cultivator. Even a big sect that had their own sky-soaring real cultivators had to weigh the decision to take on another sky-soaring real cultivator carefully. This was why Su Xuanning did not hesitate over severing her relationship with Tang Zicheng. She was going to tell her parents to cut ties with him. Too. This was because Su Xuanning feared that Bai Chen would think she had a hand in Tang Zicheng's plan to send men to take the vaccine from him. Tang Zicheng froze in place. He felt his scalp going numb, and his face paled. W, what is this ridiculousness? His lips quivered. He blurted this out, not knowing what was going on. Tang Yin's face was as white as a sheet, just like her husband's. She looked at the door through which Su Xuanning had just left and said absent mindedly, it, it seems like this young man Bai Chen is not an ordinary person. He has a terrifying background. Tang Ziqing slumped into the chair. Su Xuanning's words had terrified him. He had not imagined that Bai Chen would be someone who even Su Xuanning did not dare to cross. She even went as far as declaring that she would stop treating him as her uncle. This was like cutting ties with him. And this would include her parents as well. Su Xue Ning would have probably called to inform her parents of this by now. The words she had spoken that terrified Tang Ziqing the most were, if you want to destroy the Tang family, 
then be my guest. M, my dear, what do we do? Tang Yian sank down into the chair and spoke with a shaky voice. I, I don't know. Tang Zicheng shook his head. He also did not know what to do. He felt truly helpless in this situation. Tang Yian felt very agitated. She said, it would have been great if I had accepted the vaccine from him. Hearing this, Tang Zicheng could only remain quiet and feel regret over this situation in his heart. If he had known this beforehand, he would have never said what he'd said to Bai Chen and gladly taken the vaccine. Realizing this now was much too late though. End of Chapter 87 Chapter 88 Calling Qian Bei You are listening at NovelFull.audio Bai Chen got home in the afternoon in Long Su In's car. As soon as he got home, Bai Chen went straight to his room. He sat down on his bed and called up the life-changing system window. He wanted to see what the new mission was. The life-changing system, user. Bai Chen age. 18 years old level. 3, 0 slash 100, description. You still need 100 points to level up. Instruction. If you wish to change your life into what you have always wanted, proceed with the following missions. Mission Dashboard, Mission 16. Take care of the White Tiger Gang's people. 25 points, Mission 17. Travel by plane once. 10 points, further instruction. The order of mission completion is irrelevant. After you are done with the tasks assigned to you, you will be given a chance to receive special skills or items at random. The skills or items will give you a better life. Seeing the name of the new mission surprised Bai Chen a little because this mission was extremely easy. When Long Su and had driven him to the entrance of the Xing Sing Business District, she had already told him they would board a plane to Dong Hai Island. Bai Chen then clicked on Mission 17 to see if there were any more requirements. Mission 17 Travel by plane once, instruction. Tomorrow you have to travel somewhere far away. This time you must only take a plane. Reward for success. Win 10 points penalty for failure. None. After seeing there was nothing more to this mission, Bai Chen closed all the system windows. He then took out the iPhone he had just bought. Along the way, Long Su In had briefly gone through how to use the phone with him. The first step was to unlock the screen. Bai Chen did that rapidly and easily. He had never had a mobile phone before, so he was a little excited now that he had gotten it. Bai Chen did not know how to use it well though. He only knew how to unlock the phone and make or take a call. As for applications and Apple ID, he had not quite gotten the hang of those yet. The reason that he got out the phone was to call Qian Bei. He wanted him to tell the teachers that he would be on leave this week. Bai Chen had Qian Bei's number because yesterday when Qian Bei had invited him to play video games at his house, the nerdy guy jotted his phone number down for Bai Chen. His memory was very good, so it was not difficult to recall Qian Bei's number. He keyed in the number on the touchscreen and pressed dial to make a call, putting the phone to his ear. The phone rang four times before someone picked up. Hello. Who is that? Of course, it was Qian Bei's voice at the other end of the line. Qian Bei, it's me, Bai Chen. Ha. Huh. Boss. Qian Bei exclaimed with shock before getting excited. You bought a phone. Is that why you can call me or have you borrowed someone's phone? Is there anything that I can help you with? If so, then please do tell. This underling of yours is always ready to serve. Bai Chen had to take the phone away from his ear because Qian Bei was basically shouting. His voice was extremely loud. Calm down a bit, man, Bai Chen said, putting the phone back to his ear. Noel Daren hearing that made Qian Bei grow calmer. Yes, boss. By the way, what are you calling me for? Can you tell our class teacher that I'm going to take a week off? Bai Chen told Qian Bei his reason for calling. Of course, boss. Piece of cake. By the way, where are you going? 
why are you taking so many days off? I have something I need to take care of. Bai Chen did not say that he was going to Dong Hai Island. That was all he told him. Got it. You were also not at school today because you had some business you needed to tend to, right? Qian Bei asked. Yeah. By the way, did Li Lin show up at school today? Bai Chen could not help but ask about Li Lin. He was not sure if her anger at him had waned yet. Qian Bei was not surprised that Bai Chen asked him about Li Lin, the school's one and only beautiful flower. This was because yesterday, he had seen Li Lin leave Bai Chen's house in the morning. He had to smile before he said, I haven't seen her. Weren't you with her today? She was not at school. Bai Chen did not pay any mind to Qian Bei's teasing. Yes, she was absent, said Qian Bei, feeling slightly disappointed that his teasing hadn't had an effect. Got it. Thank you so much. If there's anything, then feel free to call this number. It's mine. All right, boss. Please take care. Qian Bei nodded. He thought he was right in that Bai Chen had likely bought himself a phone already. The boy then hung up. Bai Chen dialed another phone number on his phone and made a call as soon as Qian Bei hang up. This was the number of Su Xuaning, the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. She was also a strong cultivator. Otherwise, she would not have been to fly in the sky using a flying sword. Bai Chen could, of course, remember her phone number like Qian Bei's. The phone rang for a long while, but no one picked up in the end. Bai Chen tried calling again, but the result was the same. No one picked up. She's probably busy, Bai Chen said to himself before he gave up on calling her. He could not think of any explanations other than the fact that she must be busy. It would be best for him not to disturb her at this time. He stared at the phone in his hand for a while before thinking that having money was also important. After getting back from Dong Hai Island, I'll have to find a way to earn some cash, Bai Chen decided. End of chapter 88 Chapter 89 Strike First You are listening at NovelFull.audio Thinking things over, Bai Chen found that money was truly a necessity. He made a firm decision that after getting back from Dong Hai Island, he must find a way to earn money, though he knew it would not be easy. If I randomly received a skill that would make me a lot of money from the roulette bonus, that would be awesome. He could not help but think about the roulette function of the life-changing system. If he got a skill that could help him earn a large sum of money, it would be really great for him. That will have to wait. Before everything else, I have to finish the missions. Bai Chen decided to shelve the matter of money for now. He opened the system window to check out the details of Mission 16. Mission 16 Take care of the White Tiger Gang's people, instruction. The second most powerful member of the White Tiger Gang knows about your killing Ma Zhang and his men. He is enraged and plans to come and kill you tomorrow evening. You must take care of him and those he is bringing with him. Reward for success. Win 25 points penalty for failure. Your parents will be in danger. Seeing the details of Mission 16, Bai Chen's eyes clouded over with the desire to kill. He wanted to kill everyone in the White Tiger Gang because if he failed the mission, his parents would be in danger. Bai Chen took a deep breath and looked at the green arrow that was pointing in a certain direction. A thought suddenly appeared in his mind, it is okay if I strike first, right? It was clear that the thought that had popped into his head was to complete Mission 16 before the evening period the mission had specified in the instruction. There are no restrictions in the system, so it should not be a problem. Bai Chen thought to himself. He had decided to take care of this matter preemptively. Striking first would be a very great benefit to him. If he followed the green arrow, he should be able to reach the White Tiger Gang's base. Then, it would be easy for him to ambush all of them. Furthermore, he would also be able to avoid the police, especially now that they were still investigating the Ma Zhang murder. White Tiger Gang, I'm going to kill you all. Bai Chen roared this deep in his throat. 
He then changed into an all-dot black outfit. After he was done dressing, the boy left the house, heading to where the green arrow was pointing. Even though his parents were quite surprised at the fact that he was dressed in all back, they did not ask anything. It seemed like their son had some business to attend to. Other people in the district also did not think too much about him wearing an all-dot black outfit, because there were other people in the business district wearing nothing but black as well. Bai Chen reached the main road. He called a taxi and gave the driver directions. It was quite a considerable distance to the destination, so the fare was 50 yuan. Bai Chen paid for it without giving it much thought. This was because he thought this would be quite a good investment if he was able to eradicate the whole white tiger gang. The place that Bai Chen had arrived at was a multi-dot story hotel. There were at least six floors from what he saw. He did not walk into the hotel, instead, he headed to the back of it. Bai Chen found himself in a blind spot and looked left and right for a bit. When he saw that no one else was around, the boy used the sky-dot-gazing walker skill to leap quickly into the air. When he reached a third-dot-floor balcony, he jumped down quietly. His heart was pounding slightly. Fearing that someone would see him, Bai Chen scanned around the area. Seeing that no one had seen him, he sighed and took out a black balaclava that he brought along with him from home and put it on. After he put it on, Bai Chen pressed his face against a window that was blocked by curtains on the inside. He looked through the gap in the curtains and saw a middle. Aged man with a cruel expression. He sported a long beard and was seated on a sofa inside the room. The man was holding a cigarette in his hand, its smoke was billowing out all over the room. This middle dot aged man was, of course, Chang Du he was not alone in the room but was with seven of his men. There were eight of them in total inside this hotel room. It seems like that's the second most powerful member of the White Tiger Gang, Bai Chen thought to himself. His eyes were filled with the desire to kill. Determining Chang Du's identity was not at all difficult because he was the only one who had taken a seat on the sofa, while the other seven men, his underlings, were standing. Everyone was standing in a neat line behind Chang Du as well. Bai Chen got out a gun with a silencer. He did not want to waste time, so he moved slowly and quietly towards the sliding glass door and tried opening it. When he found that it was not locked, his heart pounded harder. Bai Chen felt like fate was on his side. He jerked the sliding door open violently and without hesitation, then rushed through the curtains and immediately pulled the trigger of the gun with the silencer attached continuously. Pew. Pew. The sound of the gun rang out multiple times before stopping because it had run out of bullets. S, someone's ambushing us, one of Chang Du's men cried out. He was the only one who had not been shot. The ten shots that Bai Chen had fired had all hit critical spots on four of Chang Du's men, causing them to slump onto the floor and die almost instantly. Dot their blood was soaking the carpet. Two other men were hit in non-dot critical spots, so they did not die, but they fell onto the floor, unable to move. They could only cry out in agony. Chang Du himself was hit twice. One bullet went in his right arm and one into his stomach. His body was covered in blood. He was crying in agony just like the two men who had been shot in non-dot critical spots. End of chapter 89 Chapter 90 Killing Chang Du are listening at novel full dot audio. After rushing into the room to open fire on Chang Du's gang until he ran out of bullets, Bai Chen stopped to look at Chang Du's crew. When he saw that there was one person whom the bullets had not hit, he quickly threw the empty gun with a silencer attached to it at him. Bang! With precision, the gun struck and fractured the man's head. The man fell to the floor, his hands on his bloody head, crying out in agony. Bai Chen took a look around the room. He let out a small sigh of relief as he was now in control of the situation. W.H. Who are you? Why have you ambushed me? Chang Du tried to hold back his pain. He used the one hand that had not been shot to cover his stomach, which was bleeding profusely. He looked fearfully at Bai Chen. 
He was honestly terrified of this man in an all-dot-black outfit and a balaclava. It was not odd for him to be this terrified since Bai Chen had suddenly barged in and shot them all from the balcony until they were all bloodied, some had even died. Who am I? Who I am is not important at all. You only need to know that today is the day you die. Bai Chen exclaimed while walking towards Chang Du. Chang Du was shaking, cold sweat running down his forehead. E, easy there, brother. We can talk this out. Whatever you want, you can tell me. I am ready to find you anything. Bai Chen did not care about Chang Du's words. He walked in front of Chang Du. At the same time, a thought occurred to him. It was a fresh idea that had just popped into his head. Thinking about it, the second most powerful member could not have known that he was the one who had killed Ma Zhang. Someone must have told him. If you answer my questions, I might spare your life, he said in a calm voice. Obviously, he did not plan on letting Chang Du live. He only tricked Chang Du into answering his questions before finishing him off. In truth, Bai Chen was not such a cruel person. But destiny had molded him into this. If he did not kill, the problems and danger would surely follow his parents later. Why? You can ask me anything, brother, Chang Du said hurriedly. He was like a rat who had found light in the darkness. The other three men that were still alive had stopped wailing. They could only sit there covering their wounds, scared to move, because they were afraid Bai Chen would kill them, even though they each had a gun on them. Who told you I killed Ma Zhang? Bai Chen asked. At the same time, he kept his eyes on Chang Du and his three men. If they were to try anything, he would kill them instantly. With his low-dot-grade martial arts technique, Bai Chen could finish them off before they could pull any tricks. S. So, you are the one who killed Ma Zhang. Chang Du was stunned by Bai Chen's question. He did not imagine that the person who had ambushed him was the same one who had killed Ma Zhang, it was only an 18-year-old boy. Answer quickly. Bai Chen shouted. He did not care about their stunned expressions. It was Dong Go. The one who came after you with Ba Guan. As Chang Du had not yet answered, his right dot hand man did instead. He was Biao Gu, the one who had not been shot but had been hit in the head with the gun, to the point that his head was fractured and bloody. So, it was him. Where is he now? Bai Chen remembered Dong Go immediately. He's at the Lai warehouse, where our gang's headquarters are, Biao Gu answered. It's not a good idea to go. You will be killed for sure. There are fifty of us and our boss is there, too. Biao Ji's words did not scare Bai Chen even a little. Instead, he felt joyful. This was because he had acquired information on the whereabouts of the White Tiger Gang. That meant he could now go take care of all of them. Biao Gu looked at Bai Chen before moving his hands behind him. He was going to take out his gun and shoot Bai Chen. What he said was not to warn Bai Chen, but to scare him. Biao Gu was hoping to shoot him while he was distracted. But Bai Chen was too good to miss these small movements of Biao Ji's. He lunged at Biao Gu instantly. He raised his fist and punched Biao Gu in the neck. Crack. A loud noise sounded. Biao Ji's head dropped down and his eyes widened. His face was full of shock. His body fell to the floor and lay still. He died in that condition. After killing Biao Gu, Bai Chen found out that his punch was very powerful. It was surely from the low-dot-grade martial arts technique that he had received. Without a word, he went ahead and killed the other two lying next to Biao Gu with his fist. The only one left was Chang Du, who peed his pants in fear. He had never seen such a killing, only one punch and the person was dead. P. Please spare my life. I beg you. I beg you. Chang Du pleaded and sobbed. No trace of the man who was the second most powerful in the White Tiger Gang remained. Bai Chen was not going to spare Chang Du's life. Otherwise, his parents would be in danger. 
he immediately killed Chang Du by snapping his neck. After looking at Chang Du and his men's bodies, he put the gun with the silencer he had thrown at Biao Gu back into the dimension ring. Though it had some blood on it, he had to take it with him because if he left it here, the police could trace it back to him using his fingerprints. After that, he left the room the same way he came in, using the low dot grade stargazing walker skill to go down. His killing was truly fast and flawless. End of chapter 90